Welcome home, everyone. Thank you for joining in on this episode of Welcome Home with the Katinas. Welcome Home is a podcast where I, your host Josh, sit down for a conversation with different people who I admire and discuss whatever's on their mind, and especially focus on life at home in times like this. Wherever you are and however you're listening, thank you for your support, and once again, welcome home. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining in on this week's episode of Welcome Home with the Katinas. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. I'm here on week three now of filming our episodes, and I don't feel any more confident with the camera. Um, but hopefully you guys have been enjoying being able to see, uh, I guess, me and our guests on YouTube now. And um, I've gotten some good feedback from, from some of the people who have been watching and uh, I think it's a, a, been a really good thing for the show to be uh, on, on camera now. So it's still something I'm getting used to, but it's been a good challenge and hopefully we're reaching a few more people out there who I personally don't consume podcasts on YouTube, but I know there's a lot of people who do. So um, having people out there that are able to, to listen to the show that way, that's awesome. And I uh, just want to thank everyone who has supported the show you know, I start out most of my episodes saying this little piece right here, but it's because of people like you that were able to have the camera here in the studio and the lights and, and, and the editing software and all that stuff. And so thank you guys so much. Um, and if you want to be a partner with the show and the Katinas ministry in general, the best way for you to do that is to visit the Katinas.com. Um, and on the website, you'll find a give button. Just click on that and it'll take you where you need to go. So thank you in advance for doing that. Um, all right, let's get into the show today. I have a first time guest with me. It's been a little bit since I've had a first time guest, so I'm excited <laughs> to have him here. Um, a lot of you probably don't know who he is. Maybe some of you do, but I just like to welcome the show, Mr. Johnny Alexander. Johnny, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I don't really get nervous, but you know, when you said the camera, I was like, "Oh man." <laughs> no, well, you're you're coming dressed nice, <laughs> and I'm glad you're here, bro. I'm I'm uh, really excited to get to talk to you. I I ran into you last weekend, actually, yep. um, and that was the first time I'd seen you in a while. It's been a while. Yeah, it was good to see you. But I would like to give you a, an opportunity really quick just for the people who may not know who you are just introduce yourself tell us a little bit about yourself yeah, and of course um if you wouldn't mind just to start off tell us like what your connection is to the katina family absolutely cool. uh i'm johnny alexander um born and raised in alabama roll tide even though we had a rough weekend <laughs> all you tennessee fans out there um no so like i said originally from alabama i um I joined the military back in 2012, and that took me out to Washington State, and that's where I met my wife, Danny. And uh, her aunt is uh, Kathy Katina, who married Yeti Katina. So that, there's my connection right there. And so, I mean, my my first interaction was a concert they came and did up in um, Seattle. Wow. And so that's when I got to meet uh, all the uncles and brothers and everything. So uh now recently we moved down here and it's been the best thing ever <laughs> awesome uh just ask me how long ago was it well how long ago did you meet danny me and danny met in 2014 okay and uh we got married in 2015 june 2015 so it's been like almost 10 years we are eight years now wow, so dude, yeah that's crazy and that's how long i'm assuming that's about how long you've known the katinas yeah, as yeah. well wow i can't believe it's been that long <laughs> I, I remember when i heard that well, I remember when I heard Danny was getting married. Yeah. And because uh, I don't think I had met you. No, yeah. I, I don't think I met you at that point. And I can't believe that's it's been almost 10 years. I, I know. It's, it's been a, a wild, crazy fun ride. I mean, 
anything, you know, said marriage eight years in, you yeah. know, you don't think anything new can ever be expected, but every day and every year for us more than recently yeah. is, has been more giving and challenging sometimes. But and you're also a father. I'm a father yeah. of three, yeah. um, nine, my daughter, oldest daughter is Peyton. She's nine. Uh, my son, Jeremiah is six and our youngest Charlie James is, uh, 15 months now. Wow. So, well, thanks for introducing yourself, man. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit before we started recording and I kind of broke down to you how the show works, but, um, for first time guests, I have three questions yeah. and um, the first two questions are really things that I'm more interested in. Um, and then the third question is, is really more about you. And mm-hmm. so we'll get there when we get there, but <laughs> I'll go good. ahead and start with, <laughs> with your first question. Yeah. And um, this is really, I guess it is a question, but more just like I'm asking you to tell a story. Um, but I would just love to hear um, kind of your journey uh, as far as the, the military goes. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what, was, what was the decision-making process like <laughs> when you're like, oh, I'm going to do this? And um, from the moment that you started that journey, like, yeah. if, you, if you wouldn't mind, just tell me, like, what your experience has been like. Absolutely. Oh, man, I... I get asked this question partly, you know, because I, I came from, I went to private school in high school, and then I went to a private college. So I went to Birmingham Southern. Um, so it was about 2010. Uh, I wasn't doing the best in college. Um, I was on the soccer team. I was in the fraternity. Oh, I did not know you played soccer. Yeah. So, and <laughs> it was an awesome time, and I was having more fun than schoolwork okay. I should say yeah. and that was not the right school to go say hey yeah. I'm here for sports uh, but I remember uh, telling my dad I was like I I was working in construction and at Hibbit Sports and I, was to, I went and told my dad I was like I think I'm gonna join the military um, not because no one in my immediate family has uh, been in the military not, okay. no grandparents no I had an uncle who went to the military academy but other than that like uh, no one was active like I could go really seek out. And so I went to the first Army recruiter and I told him, I was like, hey, I want to be Special Forces. So like, you know, like any athlete or anything, it's like, that's what I'm going to go do. Um, and so I went, actually, I, I signed. And my neighbor, he's been, at that time, he'd been in the Air Force for 17, 18 years. And he came up to me and said, what are you doing? And mm. I said, I said, I think I'm going to join the Army. He said, why? And I said, I want to go special for so I got to do something that's meaningful, that's purposeful. And that's why I was kind of missing in my life. And um, unfortunately, my brother, the next year, my brother was killed in a motorcycle accident. Oh, wow. And so that was when I kind of found myself saying, I need to just leave. Mm. Um, I was running away. I was. And I look back now and sort of would have did it different, but mm. I'm not mad about where it has brought me in life now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went back to my neighbor and I was like, he's like, we have special forces in the Air Force. Mm-hmm. And so I took his advice and I ended up joining the Air Force uh, in 2012, uh, became a tactical air control uh, patrolman. And uh, that was a ride. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of uh, the four special warfare uh, uh, elements in the Air Force. They've got TACP, CCT, PJ, who everybody knows, and um, they have SEER. And so uh, my recruiter said, why won't you be a combat controller? And then kind of going through the requirements and uh, what the physical requirements were. And he said, uh, you got to do a run. You got to do push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and a swim. And then TACP was like, yeah, you got pretty much the same push-ups, uh, run, sit-ups. I said, no swim? <laughs> he was like, he was like, no swim. I was like, yeah, I'm going tech <laughs> There's no That's swimming awesome. for me, man. We can, we can, we can go ahead and pass on that That's one. Awesome. So I, I went to basic training uh, in Lackland, Texas, and uh, uh, so once I graduated basic training, which to me was no big deal. I kind of got in trouble with the MTIs because I always say my dad yelled louder than you. So uh. <laughs> you don't really have any effect on me here. Uh, but then I, I went to uh, what is called tech. Tech, uh, technical school for uh, for your job in the Air Force, and uh, it was down in uh, Herbert Field, Florida at the time. They've moved now, but um, it was 
six months of just pure, honestly, hell. Mm. Uh, PT out of your mind. Wake up early. Uh, there was more that mental, physical. We're gonna break you down and yeah. and build you up. And so uh, the, at that time, there were only three phases. You had phase one, which was like learning how to do the radio, how to do the job. Phase two was a field type of phase where they teach you how to live out in the field. And phase three uh, was the how you do the job. Mm-hmm. And so phase one, um, I got washed back. I felt there and. Uh, and it, it was kind of hard to seeing the guys I came in with and mm-hmm. me being nor- uh, norm- normally being finishing first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on the soccer player. Uh, I started as a freshman in college. Mm-hmm. So all those things, it's like I don't fail. So yeah. that kind of hurt. And then uh, so I made it through, kept going, and then I got to the second phase. And at the time, there was an influx of people. And so they administratively watched me back. Mm-hmm. At the time... I couldn't see the, I was like, what's the benefit of this? Mm-hmm. Like, you're just tearing me down now. And um, it really hurt. And I, I was contemplating quitting. In, and that's when I actually got my tattoo, never quit, mm-hmm. on my arm. And it was because it was like, hey, my mom, you know, my dad always said, you know, no matter how hard it is, you, you push through and you'll make it through. And so I, I did. And uh, I made it through and uh, ended up getting stationed in Fort Lewis and Washington. Uh and then, so I was active duty to 2018, and in between that time, I never got deployed officially. Um, the, my only deployment, I'm going to do air quotes, mm-hmm. was to Australia. I can't ever count okay. that as a deployment. Uh, and there's some people, you know, later on, but uh, I, I did that. And over that time, we had what's called TDYs, where temporary duties, and uh, for anybody who knows military, that... TDYs are a time where you get to leave the station, kind of you just go practice a job or do training. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, in six years, from 2013 uh, to 2018, I had over 27 to 30 TDYs. Wow. And they all were either as short as a week to as long as six weeks. Um, so I was gone okay. all the time. So it's going back to when me and Danny got married in 2015, it was a lot of time where it, you know, she couldn't say he's deployed, but it was like, well, he's home for two weeks and then he leaves again for another two weeks. Yeah. And so that that was the beginning of our kind of relationship, understanding that. Mm-hmm. And then Jeremiah was born in 2016. Uh, and so I, we made a decision that, hey, we're going to uh, kind of pull back. And I was like, I think I'm going to join the guard. So 2018, I joined the guard. Um, but me being me, still a little adventurous, I became a police officer Okay. <laughs> up in Washington. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't, didn't take any stress off my wife. Yeah. Um, and then uh, moved to 2000 uh, to now. So I, now I just hit my 10 year mark wow. in the military. Uh, just uh, halfway there, as I say, it's kind of pushing through. Yeah. And, and so most recently, uh, like I said, I went, nine years nine and a half years without uh, uh actual deployment and then this year one of my first deployment took away for six months wow. so um and that and that brings us up to here so it's been a it's been a wild ride but i mean it's been good it's been had its ups and downs so how does that work as far as like how did you go nine years without being deployed and then now all of a sudden okay now you're going like how how do they make the decision on who gets deployed like what's that process like so for us, um, me being a Tac P, we support Army units. Um, I, uh, for people who don't know, Tac P's or tactical air control. Uh, for you gamers, is it's the guy who calls an airstrikes. Okay. That is what I do. Um, so we go out and we support the Army. So when I got stationed at Fort Lewis, they had just came back from Afghanistan. Um, at that time, uh, I was in what's called the Pacific uh, Air Force, so uh, PACAF. Uh, that commander did not want any of his troops going back to the Middle East mm. uh, because we were having threats from North Korea at the time. Mm. And so he halted all deployments to the Middle East. Like okay. so, And that was the only place where we were really mm-hmm. readily going. So people from my group who uh, I did went through training with, who were stationed on the East Coast, they were getting burnt out from deploying all the time, mm. while us on the West Coast were getting burnt out from not deploying. Uh. Um, and so that, I mean, that's essentially okay. how, how it happened. It just, it was unfortunate timing for me, yeah. you know, and I have friends that was like, well, it was your fault. You went over there. I was like, yeah, no, it's the air force fault. They sent us over there. <laughs> and so, um, uh, yeah, I just, it is 
crazy to go that long without a deployment when the guy I just went on this deployment with, that was his 12th. Wow, that's crazy. So, you know, it's like my first, his 12th. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, granted, he's been in 21 years, but still, you know, average deployment is six or nine months. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. lot. That's a lot. A lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, bro, thank you for sharing that story with me. I think it's, I, I, uh, whenever I hear that someone's in the military, I just usually, I don't know why, but I just assume like, oh, their fam, their fam, that's what their family does or yeah. whatever. And so it's, I had no idea that I, I assumed that yeah. your family was a military yeah. family yeah. as well. And, um, I feel like, is it more or less common for like people to join because, oh, my dad or my mom or my brother was in or. Or are there more more people like you than I would think that are they're just joining not because of family yeah. reasons? No, you're you're absolutely right. There are yeah. a lot of people who's like, no, my uncle was, my yeah. granddad was, and I I couldn't give you an exact number, but I do know a lot of people who joined. It was a few guys that I know who came in like I wanted to be different. I wanted to start this trend, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of people do join and for. Because it's part of their blood. Yeah. I have a buddy who uh, went to school with my brother-in-law, Tana, who his dad was an E9, and now he's a he's a captain. Wow. So, you know, he he followed in his footsteps and joined the Army, you know, wow. so. It's funny, man. Whenever I talk to someone in the military, they start throwing out these, like, acronyms <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that, and I just nod in my head. I have no idea. It's like you guys are speaking a different language. It's, it's hilarious, but... Um, well, thanks for, for kind of walking me through that. I guess I'll move on to your second question, which, um, you know, when I think of military service, I think of, you know, hard work, discipline, um, excellence. I think of all of those things, which I think those are good things to think of. <laughs> but I, I also, you know, I, I've had friends that are, I have friends that are in the military and, um, whenever they, they'll tell me kind of stories of what their experience is like, um, I love hearing like the funny stories because I forget, maybe I shouldn't say I forget, but I have to remind myself that like, um, soldiers are just regular human <laughs> beings, you know, and they crack jokes and, oh, yeah. and funny things happen to them just like everyone else. And so I would love to ask you for your second question if you have any funny stories from your time in Kuwait uh, that you just got home from. In Kuwait? Uh, probably not. I mean, Kuwait was just a different... It was so structured for me. Okay. I, I, I made it structured. Um, it was a matter of go to work, come back, go to the gym, do school. Okay. Like, I just made that my like life routine over there. It was more of just passing time by but so how would you yeah. pass it no fun at all for six months or was there anything that you do for fun <laughs> I, I i mean the the most fun i i mean i had we would go out to to kuwait city and we would, we would go out in the town and go have dinner I, I mean you you have to make it what what you can over there yeah. um you know everybody's experience is different mm -hmm. over there uh, i i kind of have grown in a uh since uh just life uh how i want to be perceived and what i want to do hmm. and so i really structured myself to okay. like uh, finish school um get big i mean yeah. you know it was like so i, I really structured myself and something i hadn't done uh early on in life but when but like speaking of a funny military story though and only a few will get this and i i, I love telling the story though is uh, when we were in Washington, um, we would take the Humvees out and we we're supposed to just go make sure they run well. And so, you know, when you say we're just normal people, you're you're giving 20 to 25 year olds the keys to $100,000 vehicles. <laughs> and so we would take them, you know, I remember us, there was this giant hill and we were like, I wonder what would happen if we drive it down there. So... One guy, he goes like, all right, I'll drive it down there. So he drives it down there to the bottom of the hill. And uh, he starts trying to come back up. We're like, all right, let's go. Let's get up. Let's go. He tries to come back up. It doesn't make oh, it up no. the hill. So, you know, what do you do? You get another one to try and pull it out. Okay. So another guy drives another one down oh, there. No. <laughs> so now we've got two <laughs> stuck down there. So 
for most people who don't know Humvees, it takes two Humvees to pull one technically, okay. unless you're already on flat ground. So we go, we have one Humvee left. So we have to send four guys back in this Humvee to go get two more. Oh my goodness. And so we get back and our sergeant's like, he's like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> and you know, we all, you know how kids do like, uh, nothing. <laughs> he's like, where's the other two, where's the other two Humvees? Um, they're, they're still out there. We just wanted to come get some more equipment and <laughs> we're going back out there. So he's like, all right, I'm coming with you. We're like, no, we're good. We're good. He ends up coming out there with him and did, you know, a whole bunch of explicit. It's like, what were you guys yeah. thinking? We get the Humvees out and, oh man, we didn't live that one down. Mm. It was like, did y'all think that, <laughs> you know, it was like, well, we just want to figure out the terrain. You guys are the Humvee Humvee guys now. Yeah. You yeah. know. <laughs> So, but that was, that was a, a good time. It was a bunch of good guys. And actually just recently popped up back up on my Facebook uh, mm -hmm. memories from taking pictures of just how That's idiotic awesome. and dumb things we did. That's it was funny. So, yeah. Yeah, dude, if I, if someone gave me a Humvee when I was 21, <laughs> I probably would have done something just as dumb. That's funny though, bro. Um, what are you, what are you studying in, in school right now? Uh, I'm right now I'm doing my, uh, MBA. Okay. Uh, so, uh, with an emphasis on project management, um, just wanting to expand my, my knowledge of just, um, I got my bachelor's in Homeland Security and Emergency Management because I'm a police officer. Okay. I love the community. I love working as a police officer. Mm -hmm. And so just, it's never enough tools in your toolbox is yeah. what, you know, I've been told. So, um, uh, it's another tool of something that I can accomplish and, and, feel proud about and something that I can sure. use when say my body just gives out, you sure. know, you can only work out and run so yeah. long. Sure. So you're able to, to go through classes while you were out of the country. Yeah. So I, I uh, did all online classes okay. while I was out of the country. Um, I finished eight classes in six months. Wow. Um, like I said, when I said that, that's a lot, it was a lot. Uh, yeah. I was not the nicest person when at one point yeah. it was, <laughs> Three fifteen page papers doing a week, and I was Dang. stressing. <laughs> Dang man, you're grinding. That's crazy. Well, thank you for your service, no, man, thank and you, um, thanks for for talking with me about that. Um, those are your first two questions, and mm. so uh, I'll move on to your third question. And this question is really what the podcast is all about. And um, I ask all of my guests this question, yeah. and so I'll ask it to you now. What's going on at home? What's going on at home? I mean, whew. so the last two years of our life have been nothing but a roller coaster. Um, twenty twenty one. I just start. I have to start there because uh, it, it 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 was pivotal for where where we are now. Um, my father Pat went in the hospital January sixth with COVID. Both my parents did. Um, my dad fought for five months. He ended up passing away in May. Uh, and during that time, um, me and Danny were trying to figure out what we were going to do. I mean, everyone dealt with COVID, you know, how they how they needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were staying at her parents' house. And uh, like I told you earlier, my brother passed away in 2011. Um, so I'm an only child now. Mm -hmm. And both my parents are sick with a deadly virus. And mm -hmm. so... Um, uh, before my dad passed away, me and Danny had decided that, hey, we're going to move to back to the South so I can be closer, so I could help. Uh, as you, uh, not as many people know, my wife's one of 11. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit easier for us to spread out and be able to get back where we need to go. Mm -hmm. um, but she was on my, my, she was my rock during a very difficult time. And uh, she did it all pregnant. Mm -hmm. We literally packed up and moved across the country in June. Um, I ended up coming here. I got a job with Brentwood Police Department. And so um, right before we moved is when my dad passed. And so um, after that, maybe a month later, I got told, hey, you're going on deployment. Wow. And it was like, we don't know if it's happening. So don't worry about it. You need to tell anybody, but you might go on this deployment. So that was kind of lingering for months. Um I took a pretty hefty pay cut to come to the South, but the 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 need to come was worth it uh, to yeah. be closer to family and, and get our kids back into a, a rhythm because uh, mm -hmm. there was still at the time no school was happening in Washington right. still. So uh, 
wanted to make sure kids weren't getting too far far behind. Um, and, you know, kind of got through, had, had our third Charlie James and, um, uh, she was born in July. We were in town home in Franklin. And then, uh, so it comes around about, I think December, January, they're like, no, this deployment's happening mm. and you're leaving in March. Wow. And so it's like, oh, we need to figure out how to, we're going to best prepare for this. Mm. Um, and so it, it was, it was, it was difficult, you know, uh, my wife's working from home and I'm working night shift at the time I was still in training. So my shift was never consistent and neither mm. were my days off. So we couldn't really schedule or plan anything. Um, I didn't go to Christmas in Washington. I ended up going for like a day. I had two days off mm. and I flew to Washington just to be with the kids cause they go, they went back. Um, and then just moving this year. And so I left in March. Um, and then I just got back last week. And so, um, at being at home is amazing. Yeah. Um, I think m- me and Danny's relationship, not saying that everyone should spend six months apart, mm. uh, but we were able to have deeper, meaningful conversations mm. because we weren't able to physically touch each other or, you know, not that we don't fight or anything, but like yeah. we weren't able to just walk away from the conversation. Yeah. We, we, like we had to have this conversation or we don't talk and not talking while your spouse is across the world, mm-hmm. you know, it is, it, it, it's difficult. And we had arguments we had, you know, she's at home with three kids and two dogs, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> it's like, and I'm over cause I, when I'm off, it's nothing for me to do. Mm-hmm. And so I'm either sitting at my desk, uh, watching TV or, or doing school. And so it's like, I, and I can understand how this, like I'm at home with the kids having to run here, here and here. And so yeah. that created a lot of tension, mm-hmm. um, like during and kind of working through that and talking like, okay, how can I help? Mm-hmm. Which was the biggest thing that kind of turned like, Oh, you can call here, you can call here or you can order this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that led to us building a relationship of true communication, mm-hmm. I feel like. And so, um, coming home so like you said to your question it's like being home is great right now we're able to just talk yeah and um and have a good conversation whether it's difficult or easy it's i I mean like i said we couldn't be married eight years if you didn't have good communication so um it's been it's been really good the kids have been amazing um and i'm i'm super super thankful for it but like i said you don't want to say you need six months to figure this yeah. out, you know, yeah. but, uh, I'm glad that I'm home now. I don't ever want to do it again, yeah. but <laughs> you know, I, it was able to make, make meaningful change in our relationship and our life. And yeah. so, it's, well, shout out to Danny. Yeah. Right? For, yeah. No, shout absolutely. Out to Danny. <laughs> shout out to you. Um, what I, I feel like this, I probably know the answer, but what did you miss the most while you were gone? Oh man, I, my kids, uh, yeah. I, I miss my youngest grow. Like I left and she didn't hold a bottle by herself. She wasn't even crawling. And then I come back and she is uh, walking and da da, you wow. know, so it's, it's huge. And my, uh, Jeremiah's playing football, Peyton singing. And so it was just, um, I mean, my, my kids and my, and Danny just was, yeah. I'm so thankful for FaceTime that, made up a lot of yeah. time and I made it a, a goal. Like we're going to FaceTime every day mm. and you know, some days the internet goes out over there and yeah. I literally couldn't. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely just miss being home with the kids and wife. It was, it's something you miss. It, yeah. it can get, it gets, you make friends over there. Um, but some friends are temporary and then you always know, I always saw said, think about what you're going back to. Yeah. You get through this and think about what you're going back to. So that's yeah. how I had to look at it. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure being away from home for six months, like don't don't say six months, to Danny, because she's going to tell you it was seven. Okay, because seven, because seven I was in Kuwait Danny. six months, but I had to leave a month okay. early for Washington. So okay. let me let me clarify that. <laughs> I'm sure being a, away from home for seven months. Yeah. I'm sure that it. Um, opens your eyes to the things that you were taking for granted. Absolutely. Um, I think, 
<laughs> this is totally different, but like when I, I, I think about when I left home for college, there were certain things about being home here, here in Franklin and near my family that I realized when I was at college that, I, that those were like really important things yeah. to me and things that I really liked. And, but I was taking them for granted while I was here. Yeah. Um, outside of like, obviously your wife and your kids, is there anything else that stood out to you in your time away that was like, man, when I get back, I'm never taking this for granted again. <laughs> as bad as it is, th- that country is a, it's a dry country, mm-hmm. so you can't drink alcohol. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm a big whiskey guy. I love to just <laughs> sip some whiskey, and, and my guilty pleasure is give me a Coors Light and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the food. I mean, the food is great over there. I, I miss the food, and I miss being able to, uh, besides those like meaningless things, I'm an outdoors guy, and I mm. love working with my hands. Like, I got back, and the first thing I do is I'm putting up uh, lights and poles and just mm. working in the backyard, working yeah. with my hands. And so I really did miss that because, one, you didn't want to really be outside there. The average temperature over the summer is 120 degrees every day. Wow. So it was, oh my goodness. you know, and it wasn't as people think this dry heat. No, yeah, it, I was going to ask. It got a hundred percent humidity. And wow. I mean, the air conditioner was sweating. That's, I mean, Damn. how humid it was. So it, it was, it was hot. Um, and the AC would go out. That would sometimes take that for no granted. Way. Like the AC no. would go out and you're just fans and everything yeah. trying to sleeping on top of your sheets, That's you crazy. know? Um, I feel like this is probably embarrassing, but like. I feel like there's a lot of people watching who probably don't even know where Kuwait is. Or like, <laughs> could you explain like what is? Well, did you spend much time with the locals out there? Or no? So I mean, going to um, going to the city, Kuwait City, uh-huh. you you get exposed to the locals pretty okay. much. I'm assuming the, that's like a, a big city out. Yeah, there, it's or? it's a pretty big city. I'm um, actually, I mean, little known fact that. Kuwait is one of the richest countries per capita mm. because of oil. Yeah. And so, I mean, like you see everybody, locals driving G-Wagons and Mercedes wow. and all, all, like the things you see in Dubai on a yeah. smaller scale, it's like in the city there. Um, I, we were fortunate enough, one of the guys who uh, went on a deployment with us, he was born in Iraq. Okay. Um, and he is now a U.S. citizen. He's in the Air Force with us great guy but he still speaks the language and so he was able to it's awesome having like your personal translator do they speak arabic yeah okay yeah Yeah. and so um it that that was awesome so he kind of told us a little bit background of where it is but like to answer your question the kind of where kuwait is um now i'm drawing a blank but i'm pretty sure it's the med is it the man i don't want to sound it's like the saudi peninsula right yeah so i'm just gonna it's (laughs) So Iraq is directly north of Kuwait. Okay. And north of Kuwait is Syria. Um, and then you know what? We're just gonna I'm like, cause I don't wanna <laughs> so, I, I don't wanna sound crazy. And if somebody goes like, no, that dude doesn't know where he was. <laughs> while, while you're looking it up, it's funny, over the last like week or so, I've been maybe a little bit longer, but um I've been doing this thing online that's like uh it's basically like a quiz. I'm trying to learn all, the, yeah. the entire world map. <laughs> And so Kuwait's one of the countries that I always forget. And so I've been ty- lately. I've it's been tiny. It's easy. Yeah, it's it's actually really tiny. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad I didn't say that out loud. It's it's the northwest corner of the Persian Gulf. Okay. Um, so, but it is uh, it is tiny when you look at a map compared to Iraq. It's between Iraq and Iran, um, in north of Saudi Arabia. So um, uh, um, culturally, are they like? I'm assuming it's a lot different than it is oh, here in yeah. the States. Like yeah. what, what are some of the biggest differences that you notice while you're out there? A lot, you know, how we go to, so because it's one of the city per capita, their malls are extravagant. Wow. I, I mean like marble floors, chandeliers, and it's extravagant. Uh, the women, it was a good, I want minimal, um, mix, but the women cover their sales. Most mm-hmm. of the women, they, completely covered um in all black and you only can see their eyes mm-hmm. while there are some that dress more westernized mm-hmm. um, we went to see top gun while we were over there oh, nice. and uh the movie theater how you know we kind of just mix and mingle if you're with a family with a female 
uh, you have this in a separate section than with all the males together. Oh, wow. You don't see females hanging out with, um, I shouldn't, women, sorry, hanging out with um, just a group of guys or anything uh, like that. Um, they're, they're the spouse or someone. Okay. Um, and then they do have a lot of Filipinos over there and really? and uh, Indians actually, hmm. and they're I mean in my opinion they're the backbone of that country. They're wow. the ones you see actually working hmm. and doing the service jobs. So um, that that was kind of that was culturally different. You didn't see a lot of like hand holding in the mall. Okay, you know, um, not a so, lot of PDA. Not a lot of PDA. Okay. And so, you know, that kind of, and people don't look at, you know, especially here in the South, you know, we see each other and we go, Hey, you know, no, they, it's like laser focused Mm. on not looking at making eye contact because they know you're American. Mm. And so it's maybe it's a little bit different for people they know, you'll see normal conversations, but uh, for the most part, no, they won't even make eye contact with you. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'll ever go to Kuwait, but (laughs) if I do, I'll... I'm gonna go to the mall. <laughs> Check it's, it out. It, it, I mean, it was it, extravagant. I, I can't wow. even. That's so interesting. I'm not, that's not what I think. Of. No, you know, it's I not. I think of like sand dunes. That's what I think. There was of. plenty of those too. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Those and camels. I mean, you wow. see camels out there, like you see wild deer. So wow, that's crazy. Well, speaking of culture, um, you're born and raised in the South. You spent. Um, quite a bit of time in the Northwest, yeah. which I think most people know that the, there's different cultures just between those two. Yeah. Now that you're back here in the South, welcome back. Um, <laughs> kind of similar question to what I asked earlier, but like, what are some of the things that you missed about the South while you were gone that you're glad to be, uh, to have back? Um, I mean, the not as crazy as it sounds, the way of life here is just, it's different. Mm. Uh, everybody's not trying to just go, go, go here. Hmm. It's kind of, everyone has a focus and purpose, but, uh, you know, it's still kind of a little bit laid back, a little yeah, bit slower. slower. Um, and one, I miss the weather. Mm. <laughs> I miss the long summers of going to the pool from April to, yeah. you know, not this week. I mean, it's been freezing, yeah. but um, it, it, I, I did. The culture is... I don't even know how to explain it that, that much. Just, I have a, and maybe it's just because I'm born here mm-hmm. that I miss that feeling of people wave here. Yeah. Uh, people don't do that up there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure some people have heard of the uh, Seattle uh, freeze of people. Like mm-hmm. they don't, they walk in there just laser focused. Yeah. Um, here in the South, you like, you can go to any store. How you doing today? Hey, mm-hmm. you know, you, and I'm a very personable person. Yeah. I love talking. And so, it's easy for me to strike up a conversation with sure. anybody here where there is like kind of prying teeth. Like, hey, mm-hmm. how you doing? And it's like, good. Yeah. Like, okay. It, <laughs> it's funny. Whenever I talk to someone who's from the South that has spent time living outside, that always comes up. Yeah. It's like, and to me, I, maybe it's because I'm more of an introverted person, <laughs> but like, to me, it's like, I don't know if I would really miss that. I think I yeah. probably would just because I grew up here and I'm used to like, the you know what pe- southern hospitality yeah. thing and that doesn't i still don't even know if i really understand what that means because i've never lived outside of it yeah and so um but that always comes up whenever i talk like one person that comes to mind is my auntie chrissy who yeah. grew up in new jersey and right. i've talked to her about it on the show and and that was one of the first things she brought up is like the difference is like people are friendlier here yeah more willing to, you know, wave at you if you're walking through the neighborhood, which I guess I'm sure that goes a long way if you're not used to it. But to me, it's like, wow, that must really, um, I must really take that for granted because yeah. I don't even think about that as like something that, um, is important to me. Right, yeah. But, um, well, bro, I, uh, I want to ask you one more question. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I ask this to some of my guests because it's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about um, for myself and just for the people around me. Um, but I, I'm really interested in what people's dreams are for their lives. And, you know, whether it's a big dream or like a seasonal dream or a small dream, 
Um, but I just want to ask you, what are you dreaming about lately? Oh, lately. I mean, right now is finishing my MBA is my biggest goal. Um, I have been, I worked hard enough to, and never in my life have ever had straight A's and I have a 3.9 right now. Wow. And so, uh, being able to finish, uh, that in the short term, uh, I'm supposed to graduate at the end of January, nice. two and a half classes left. So, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that right away. Mm -hmm. um, I know what, what my goals are and thoughts are of where I want to go in life. Um, but like my biggest focus actually just coming home is how the best to support my family. How can I be the best dad, the best husband I can possibly be? Whether that means it, and Danny takes off and she's doing something incredible because she loves it and I stay at home, I'm happy to do that mm -hmm. because that's the best thing for my family where... Mm -hmm. Where are as I, I successful in whatever I choose to do, or I get a promotion at the police department, or whatever, uh, that however I can be the best man I can possibly be. Um, uh, you know, I, as you grew up in the church, I grew up in the church, and so I, I gain my strength and know that you know God's on our side, and I've got I've got a, a beautiful, amazing, strong woman next to me who has been. Nothing short of amazing and supporting my dreams and aspirations, and I just always want to do the same for her. And I want to give my kids opportunity to be themselves, do what they want to do, and not feel any pressures that they did, they that I had to growing up. You know, yeah. so I, I want them. I want to be able to support them as best I can. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing that with me, and uh, thanks for coming over. I really appreciate your time. Oh man, thanks for having me. It's, yeah. uh, it's awesome to, to be here. It's awesome to catch up. <laughs> of course, man. You're welcome here anytime. I'd love to have you back on maybe in a couple months and uh, we'll talk about the NBA. And yep. everything. <laughs> well, uh, again, thank you, man. And um, I'm really glad you're back. So. I appreciate it. Thank but you. To those of you listening, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back with more episodes soon. Have a great day.